What's up, marketers? You might think that analyzing your creatives looks something like this. So this creative spent $11,400, purchases were 251, the CPA was $45, click-through rate a little higher on average at 93%, hook rate above average at 44%, hold rate 8%. And yeah, this creative did pretty good. Yikes. That is not an analysis. The truth is, is that your clients and team names don't want a wall of data. They can do that themselves. What they want is an analysis, a translation of that data and what it means for your next steps. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I analyze creatives. So you can continue to make creative that converts for your brand. A huge thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. They play a huge role in getting me creative that converts, but more on that in a bit. Analyzing your meta ads creative boils down to a three-step process. And the first one is you have to track the right data. And this is specifically when looking at your individual creative tests. And the way that I like to think about this is actually dividing up my primary KPIs versus my storytelling KPIs. And simply put, I am making actions in scaling and turning off ad sets based off of the primary KPIs, but I am using the storytelling KPIs to tell the story story of why. So you can see here that in the primary KPI section, we have amount spent, results, and cost per result. This is most likely going to be purchases or even cost per lead. And then I have the storytelling KPI. So you can see here I have frequency, CPM, cost per reach, reach impressions, click through rate, CPC, video hook, video hold, average play time. And you can see here that I actually have circled video hook, hold, and average video watch time as the most important storytelling KPI specifically for video creative. So again, looking at my primary KPIs, these numbers are going to tell me, is this a winner in the ad account? Should we scale it up? Or if it's not a winner, should we scale it down? Or should we even just turn it off altogether? Your frequency is gonna tell you how many times on average this is shown to the same person. I primarily like to track frequency at an account-wide basis, but sometimes it's interesting to see if some creatives have higher frequencies than average. I also like to track CPMs to see, okay, how much is this creative actually costing us to get placed on certain placements? Is it above average? Is it below average? Is there something about the placement or the age that's making it go up or down? And then there's click-through rate. And I really just like to look at click-through rate and CPC as it compares to what's going on with the account average. It's oftentimes interesting to see, oh, this specific creative test drove a lot more clicks and a higher click-through rate as opposed to other creatives. And I particularly like to compare that against the top performers. And then for the most important storytelling KPIs, I often think that these can tell a lot about the creative at hand. The hook rate is going to tell you how good you are at getting people's attention. The hold rate is going to tell you how good you are at maintaining that attention. And I also like to cross analyze hold rates with the average video watch time. Now, the way that I calculate hold rates is it's going to be the amount of people who watched up to 15 seconds of your video. If you have a video that's under 15 seconds, then that's triggered when people complete watching it. So say you have a seven second video, if someone completes that video, then that's going to trigger a hold rate. And just so that I understand video to video or test to test how long people are actually watching, that's when I like to look at that average video watch time. And it's oftentimes when I'm looking at at the hook and hold rates that I see, oh, we could actually be doing a little bit more here. And this is where Storyblocks comes into play. They have a curated content library that has everything that you need to make high quality video ads for Meta and TikTok. And it's everything in one place. They have over a million 4K and HD footage, templates, music, sound effects, images, and a whole lot more. So if you find that you're in the place where you need to increase your hook rates, I love finding videos that emphasize texture, emotion, and even bright colors. And my hack here is to combine that content in a split screen format alongside your UGC and your studio footage. Now, the best part is, is that anything that you download with Storyblocks is 100% royalty free. So you do not need to worry about licensing rates, even for ads. In my opinion, they have the best video ad library on the market and they're constantly adding new clips based on consumer demand. So there's always something new for you to increase the conversions on your ads. And you don't have to plan a photo shoot or work with a content creator to get that content. You can literally just get it instantaneously from Storyblocks. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, go to storyblocks.com slash Dara Demi or click the link in the description. The next thing you're going to want to do is dive into your advanced analytics. And I like to do this specifically by looking at certain breakdown data inside of Ads Manager. 
This is something that I only find the experts do. And the main ones that I like looking at are age, gender, and placement. And I like to prioritize these by the amount spent. But in many ad accounts now, you can also prioritize it by the number of conversions. So sometimes I'll look at a creative test and I'll see, oh, this specific creative test is appealing to a certain target demographic, maybe a certain gender or a certain age. And potentially that might be out of the norm. Or what we'll see is that, hey, actually our target demographic is a little bit different than we thought. I very, very often will actually work with beauty and skincare brands and they'll be like, our target demographic is 25 to 34. And then I'll look inside of their breakdown data and see actually the majority of people who are actually buying this or the spend is being pushed to audiences that are 45 plus. So I like to conduct this analysis on age, gender, and placement across all new tests. Then I draw conclusions about why I think that that specific is creative. It's being delivered to a certain placement or being delivered to a certain age or gender. And I also like to do this analysis to cross the board to get baseline data to see what is the average. So if you're able to get that baseline data, it's really going to help you draw new conclusions about every single test that you're running. Now, of course, on the advanced analytics side, with many of my clients, I am using a triple whale, a north beam, a rocket box to really determine, okay, is this creative really standing the test up against all of the other ways that we're acquiring customers? But honestly, for a majority of brands, especially if you're spending under 200K per month on your meta ads, I'm relying more heavily on that platform data. And I'm also looking at the storytelling metrics directly inside of ads manager or a platform like motion and number three is to like and subscribe to this video or leave a comment all of those things are super super helpful for me and i read every single one of your comments i really enjoy when we start a discussion and share what we're seeing on the platforms the real number three is now you have all this data right it's time to turn it into an analysis so this is what that would look like Okay, so we're gonna go over the education statics. Now, the reason why we wanted to do these is because educational content has produced really great results for us in the past. So drawing from those learnings, we actually wanted to try doing them in a static version because the previous versions that we have done were all video. So we had four variants. And what's awesome is we had great initial performance across all of the variants, um, and it's even in line with some of our top performers. Now, as you can see, we actually have lower than average CPCs and CPMs, um, which shows that we have quite a bit of scale potential here, which is really exciting. The version with the best performance is the how-to messaging variant, so users might be looking for a little bit more tutorial-based education content. So there's a lot of opportunity for us to test different variations of how-to content. The top performing imagery here was actually the plain logos, which is really surprising to me. Um, so we're going to want to pressure test this in the next few tests, but users might be focusing more on the overall messaging versus the pictures. So this might actually allow them to focus more on that messaging. The age breakdowns are actually pushing us into a new demographic here. It's a little younger than average. So generally we're seeing the bulk of our spend and conversions coming from 35 to 44. And for this particular creative, we're actually seeing more spend coming out of 25 to 34. The placement breakdown is a little lower on average on stories. So let's make sure that we're always including nine by 16 options in these. As far as next steps for this piece of creative, we're going to continue to scale up in place and advance them to ASCs and scaling campaigns to see how they convert against some of our other top performers. And on the creative side, we're going to be doing some new variants of this with more how-to messaging. We're also going to test out some more how-to messaging in some upcoming UGC briefs. Again, your primary KPIs are going to determine if an ad was a winner or not and how it's stacking up to your other top performing ad creatives. Your storytelling KPIs are going to help you tell the story of why. Your advanced metrics are going to help provide more context. And it can also illuminate if you're actually using the right format and messaging and creators to reach out to the right demographic. At the end of the day, your analysis should do four important things. Number one, it's going to share the data. Number two, it's going to provide the context for that data. How does it perform against other top performers, against other tests, against the account in general? You can also go a step further and provide benchmarking data with a tool like Varos. And then you're going to go into the why why it performed or why it didn't perform. You're going to dig deep on the imagery, the messaging, the talent. And I think it's really important to say a lot of this part is subjective. You are giving your best honest guest as a professional as to, based on the data, why you think a certain creative performed or didn't perform. And number four, you should always outline the next steps. I like to do that at an ad account level. So are we going to scale? Are we going to turn it off? What are we going to do inside the actual ad account? And then also on the creative level, 
flow? Are we going to iterate this creative? Did we get a learning that's really impactful? Or do we need to go back to the drawing board altogether? And that's all. I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. Again, thank you so much to Storyblocks for the sponsor. Guys, if you end up signing up through Storyblocks, let me know or start a conversation down below if you have any questions about it. I've seriously been using it on a ton of accounts recently and it's been so nice to not have to schedule a shoot or wait for a creator to content back. Seen some amazing results there. So um, I will see you guys next week. Bye.